Welcome everyone to our lecture on protists. The first thing we need to know about our kingdom protista is that it is an incredibly diverse kingdom. It includes everything from diatoms and dinoflagellates and amoebas to seaweeds like calerpa and kelp and this one over here. It also includes parasites like sleeping sickness and giardia, slime molds, photosynthetic algae, um, paramecium, and many others. So it's an incredibly diverse kingdom, and with all of this, we need to first define what is a protist. So the way we're going to do this is by making a concept map. So we're going to put protist right here in the middle, and we're first going to talk about some things that all protists have in common. So one thing all protists have in common is that they are eukaryotic, meaning that they have a nucleus. Another thing they all have in common is that they live in damp habitats. We will talk about what these damp habitats are in a future video. All right, they are also aerobic, meaning they use oxygen. They are also capable of true sexual reproduction. meaning they can perform both meiosis and fertilization. And they are capable of asexual reproduction. All right, so what makes our protist different? Because we have a great amount of diversity within our protist. One thing that makes them different is how they get their food. So we are actually gonna start with how they get their food. And we're gonna break this into a few different branches. Our first branch is going to be our plant-like protists. These protists are photosynthesizers. We often call them autotrophic, which means self-feeding. They're commonly known as algae and include things like diatoms and seaweeds and dinoflagellates. All right. Our other branch of protists um, gets their food by feeding on other sources. So we're going to start with, in that one, our animal-like protists. Our animal-like ones are consumers. We can also call them heterotrophic, which means other feeding. They feed on other organisms. And in feeding on other organisms, they can either be predators or parasites. And examples of these ones include things like amoeba, paramecium, and malaria. Our last group of protists that we can have is our fungus-like protists. Now these ones also get their food from other organisms, but in a slightly different manner. Our fungus-like protists are what we call saprotrophic, meaning that they absorb decaying matter. This includes things like slime molds. And they're different from true fungus in that they typically do not have centrioles, or they do have centrioles, real fungi don't. And their cell walls are different from the cell walls of fungi. All right, so that's one way we can group our protists. Another way we can um, differentiate among protists is by how their cells are grouped. 
So our protists can either be unicellular, or they can have multiple cells. And in having multiple cells, there's a few different options. They can be colonial, meaning it's a bunch of the same cells grouped together, but they don't have defined tissues. They can be filamentous, meaning the cells are arranged in long chains, or they can be truly multicellular. And if an organism is truly multicellular, like a seaweed, it has distinct tissues. All right, so another way that we can differentiate among protists is by how they move. We call this their motility. And while not every protist has the ability to move, many do, and we're gonna break it down into their three basic cellu cellular structures for moving. The first one is their flagellum. All right, and a flagellum is a whip-like or tail-like apparatus. It's an extension of the cytoskeleton that the protist can use to move. Our most famous non-protist example of this is um, a sperm cell, but protists like euglena also have these. All right, we can also have cilia. Cilia are small hair-like structures all around the outside of the cell. And then we can also have a pseudopod. The word pseudopod means fake foot. These are the classic amoeba shapes. All right, they're the oozy extensions of the cell. And what a pseudopod does is it actually builds the cell, the cell, um, the cell's cytoskeleton in the direction the cell wants to move and breaks it down in the cell, direction the cell is moving away from. And so in that way, this um, cell can inch towards whatever it is moving to. Right. So these are our basic features and characteristics of protists and how we can differentiate among them and what makes them similar.